Hello and a welcome back to This or That with Kobe and Das. Welcome back from Iceland. Uh, we are presented by Verizon. Still, nothing has changed, my friend. Don't worry. I was I wasn't too worried about that. Hopefully, we didn't upset anyone too much uh, that they would pull the uh, pull the support. Uh, but yeah, man, just got off the plane less than 24 hours ago. Right into week one of the LCS, man. It never stops, and I love it. Right into LCS and right into this or that. Let's get into the slides. Here we go. Summer split. Let's get it going. Who takes the first win of summer? We've got Team Liquid versus TSM. The third place match. I'm going to go Team Liquid. I'm going to go Team Liquid. I think that this team is actually only going to get better and get stronger um, from what we saw in spring. So I, I think that in terms of like overall upside of teams, I think TL in my mind has a little bit more of a or like a higher ceiling and they're going to realize that here in summer and we're going to see the beginnings of that uh on day one i've already heard some inklings of of scrims uh that make me feel a little bit worried for tl but i'm still really tl because scrim stuff has has just thrown me through a loop before so i we're not taking that into account they beat them in the mid-season showdown, uh, I think that they, they they will retain the advantage here for the opening game. Number two, what do we got? All right, let's see here. King in for Sven. Skeptical or believer? Where are you on this? I am skeptical, okay? Sven was uh, performing quite well, both in the LCS and at MSI. And when things like this happen, yes, they, they came out, they made their video, you know, King deserves a chance. But King is also a, a resident by virtue of being an Osh player. So you get that little angle, but as far as it making Cloud9 in their games right now, I think for sure you would say with without contest, they would be stronger if they kept Sven in uh, right now, unless there's some weird stuff going on inside, you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, right. We, we never know exactly what's going on behind the scenes. And the resident point is an interesting one. And it would make the move make a lot more sense to me if there was another announcement that came along with it, you know, and therefore we've unlocked a <laughs> slot to put so and so in in this other position. But that didn't happen. And, and I'm with you of of the performers at MSI. I thought, you know, Fudge uh, really surprised and impressed. But I also thought the bot lane performed very solid. It wasn't in either Vulcan or Sven in my in my mind that seemed to be the underperformers there. So this does uh, come off as a very <laughs> peculiar move to me. And I, I understand they must have the reasons, but I'm going to be skeptical 100% when you take out, you know, one of the big star veteran AD carries in the league at the moment uh, and bring in uh, and bring in somebody who isn't as proven. Simple as that. Yeah. We got to send in a spy. Investigative journalism. Get inside. Get the scoop. <laughs> Next slide. What do we got? More viable jungle pro pill. Ooh, Nautilus. Okay, so they've been doing this thing where they try and you know buff champions uh, for lane champions to make them available for people who are like auto filled jungle and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, Nautilus is one that they, in my opinion, did not buff enough if they really want to be in jungle because okay. he is so slow. One of the biggest things for junglers is is your movement speed just base movement speed this is one of the slowest champions in the whole freaking game and while hecarim <laughs> did get nerfed super hard a uh, solo queue win rate is down to like 47 percent or something right like that. um at least he's still fast and, and not yeah. this uh he's still even sitting under there b below hecarim so even though hecarim got the nerfs i'm still choosing hecarim I got to go with Hecarim as well. Uh, I, I would be very curious to see what the 150% damage on the E to uh, jungle monsters looks like in terms of how quick the clear is, because we saw what that did for champions like Morgana. Uh, but I can't imagine that he's moving that Jack fast. Check those numbers up, James. Those um, rookie numbers. <laughs> those are rookie numbers. Right, Jack him to 200%. Everyone realizes it's OP and then slowly <laughs> curtail it down. Um, I'm going to go with Hecarim as well, because I do think that mobility point that you're talking about is super important. So just having having the option based on move speed and mobility to affect the map or be where you need to be is super important in the jungle. Also, I'm going to tack on the fact that I'm hearing some some rumblings that Divine Sunderer feels uh, like it's it's back. It's and whether or not that's what you want to go on Hecarim, I think it, it can maybe now be a viable option and maybe that version of Hecarim becomes uh, becomes available again. So unless you're flash holding people as Jungle Nautilus, I don't really see the, the payoff. Yeah, I, I don't think they're 
either of them is super good or anything, but I would definitely sure. give the, the edge to Hecarim. And it's a good point you touch on the build because the buffs to Hecarim, the tiny buffs here that are trying to, you know, make up for the big nerfs, were to attack damage scaling for the champion. So yeah. you do need to go with that. You keep uh, attack damage build. You can't can't just be going full tank anymore, zooming around. Next one, what do we got? Bigger pickup for 100 Thieves, is it Reaper or Abadage? What is your thought here? Another European pro comes across the ocean. I think this is a very interesting slide because they are both very weighty pickups to me. 100 Thieves making the biggest moves in between spring and summer for sure. Uh, for me, Abadage coming in for mid lane, I think is gonna slightly edge out Reaper, but there's so much more variance in the effect that, you know, bringing in Reaper as a coach for this team can have, right? He could completely change the direction of the team. He could yeah. push in players to have all these wild and crazy picks, not following the meta, following the meta, you know, like there's there's so many angles. Because Reaper has, has uh, had a long time to think about uh, how he wants to uh, approach coaching as he returns to the LCS uh, with his downtime. But I think I got to take the for sure value of Abadage coming in for the mid lane. I'm latching onto that. Uh, the Reaper one to me is a, it could be dicey, could be super good, could be you know, game changing. Yeah. Uh, but, Damn, I was kind of hoping, I was kind of hoping we were going to disagree on this one, but I think I'm with you. <laughs> I have to go with the thing that feels more certain in some ways. And what we know that 100 Thieves um, to some degree has been missing over the last couple of years has been a very stable, solid mid laner, maybe somebody that can get work done on the map, you know, duoed up with, with the jungler. Um, and, and while we were looking at DeMonte to maybe be that person, 100 Thieves didn't think uh, that that was, you know, the right fit. And so here we go. We've got somebody who I think can actually step up to that responsibility. My argument for Reaper uh, would be, you know, the fact that uh, we've seen what he could do with Cloud9 with many different variations and different players at different stages in their career and bring them to relative levels of success. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go with Abadage. I just think that this will actually be the test. If, if Reaper is successful, I think that this cements him beyond belief as one of the best coaches, because to go to a different org that you know has had a, a history of some ups and downs and, and not quite cresting into that top echelon of teams, if he can take them there, I think it bodes pretty well for his resume. It certainly will. I'm so excited for the for the changes. I love it when the teams are, are going to make some moves like this and that that power struggle for the top here. Because you know, 100 Thieves, they want a championship they in do. the LCS. Let's get to the next slide. What do we got? Who will place higher in summer? Evil Geniuses or Dignitas? For me, this is easy because we just did our power rankings on the dive. You want my reason? That's no fair. Ahead. Uh, go over there. <laughs> I'm going with Evil Genius. Okay, why? Because I think that Evil Geniuses have a higher peak than Dignitas. Dignitas did not change anything. And while I was all for the Dignitas party bus, okay? I was front row, baby. Party on. All at A. You know, upsets all over the place. Let's make it happen. Uh, and and I do think that this team was was definitely underrated. They they deserve the success that they had. E.g., making the change to invest in in new talent, bringing up. You know, Danny is now the youngest player in the LCS. He's 17. Wow. Coming straight from Academy, coming from their Prodigy team, or not from Academy? Excuse me, skipping Academy, coming from their <laughs> Prodigy team, which is which is uh, amateur. It's like just slingshotting him up there, uh, like. That is that has got to be you know nerves for him because he even only played an amateur for one year, right? His his competitive history here is, is only since 2020. So uh, I, I think it's super exciting. Uh, Evil geniuses, I just think they're rocks of uh, you know impact in the top side, um, as well as the combination of of uh, you know kill threat with uh, Jizuke and Sven Scare. And I feel like yes, they're both volatile, but. You know, at least one of them is gonna, gonna cost some sparks. Okay, interesting. But see, one of the one of the one of the things you brought up in your argument is, I think one of the reasons why I have less confidence in Niji. He is such a young player who does probably feel a fair amount of pressure in making that jump past academy and needing to prove that he is deserving of this spot. How is that going to affect him early on in the split as he finds his footing? 
how much uh, you know time has this version of the team really had to gel. While I actually think the fact that Dignitas didn't make a ton of changes does bode well because they already blew our expectations out of the water. No one expected them to be 11 and seven and to be tied for fourth like they were in spring. So imagine as we already underestimated them in their initial split together as a roster, how much more they can do um, as a team. And I think it should not be forgotten that while there are a few members of the team, you know, uh, looking at Afromu, looking at Dardock, guys who have been around for quite some time and have been given their fair shot, I think you could still make the argument, solely go fake God, that last split was their first real, you know, split being fully invested into Neo as well. And so uh, I'm excited to see with what solid base that team has already built by not changing pieces and just saying, we're going to continue, continue to invest in this roster, how far they will go. So if they were already fourth, maybe they break into top three. And I'm not sure I see this EG roster making it all the way up there. I also want to reset the bar for dig back low again. <laughs> okay, okay, so what? Party so bus crashing through again. True, 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 true. Maybe <laughs> top six, top six. Be like, I told you so. I th yeah, yeah, yeah. I think top six is, is where I could see dig falling. EG, six, seven, eight. All right, next slide. Best top laner in summer. Ah, Ooh. this is a controversy. I believe it sparked Still out party. LS ranking fudge above Alfari. I would, I'm still with Alfari as well. Still with Alfari. Fudge coming off that MSI high has got to be just so ec ecstatic right now, uh, especially his Lee Sin play, but a lot of his play, even on the less flashy things like the mouth fight, you know, the team fighting. Um, yeah. I think he definitely deserves all the praise for his improvements uh, and a lot for, her, for his team fighting. Alfari to me, though, um, if Cloud9 don't have, you know, Blabber getting up there, first blooding him, camping him, kicking him all the time, uh, I, I still think he's he's going to have, a, you know, a kingdom up there in the top the, lane. The, the guy averaged plus 15 CSD. Like, you can't, I don't, I know, Fudge is better and he's getting better, but I don't think between the end of spring split and the start of summer split that he got plus 15 CSD better in terms of his laning, like just to put a number on it. So yeah, it is still going to be Alfari Kingdom. But again, I think that this just goes to show the incredible growth that Fudge has made that he's even in this conversation. And I do think Fudge will come in probably top two, you know, yeah. top laner and maybe will challenge, but uh, but I still, I do, I got to lean towards Alfari in this one. He was so uh, solid. I'm so excited for their uh, for their first matchup uh, in week number one here because you know a lot is going to be riding on that too uh, on the top lane matchup. There's a, there's, yeah, oh, there's so a lot of uh, there's a lot of pent up first bloods that happened in the mid season show down there. That's a good point. That's a good point. I mean the Lee Sins, man. Give me more of that. Give me more Fudge Lee Sin. Everything from Malphite to Lee Sin. Honestly, I'm a fan. I'm a huge fan of the guy. So I would <laughs> love for him to prove us wrong. You know, in, uh, in calling out Alfari. That's what I'm going with. Yeah, until uh, he gets the, he gets, he's got to get that crown by taking down Alfari in their first game. Let's go next slide though. What do we got? I think this is this last one coming up. Best superpower to have in real life: this, that, or the other thing? Teleportation, invisibility, or shape shifting? Oh man, these are all good. So ah. teleportation, Dang. teleportation, because. Uh, I'd, Why? I think about think about how much time you would save. I think I think the one thing that is true in life is that our, our time on this on this planet is finite, right? And with the with the uh, superpower of teleportation, you would save so much time not only in your daily life, but Kobe, think about you could travel to every country in the world with ease. And without having to deal with, you know, the craziness of it all, you could do a day trip to a foreign country. So packing and all these kinds of things aren't really an issue anymore. And honestly, what does invisibility get me? What am I going to do with that? I don't actually know. Maybe I could, um, you know, I don't know, rob beat a bank some kind of system. Good. Yeah, rob a bank. <laughs> like I, I was like, everything I'm coming up with is some crazy way to get rich <laughs> like, by being invisible. Which I guess would be good see, too, but see, if you can teleport, you can teleport in and out of a bank vault. Like, I, I, <laughs> see, I'm glad that you chose teleport instead of invisibility because I was gonna go shape shifting, 
Okay. And if you go shape shifting, then invisibility really has nothing on you because I can just shape shift into like a tiny little fly or something. And that's true. That to a human eye, that's basically invisibility. Plus, you can change your your size. So yes, you could be invisible. Somebody could still like walk into you if you're hiding yeah. in a room or something, or like <laughs> a bump or something. So I think invisibility yeah. is trash. So that's I came out. to that conclusion quickly. Yes. So I'm okay. glad you went with teleportation because that's the hard rival for me. That's I'm tough, go right? Shape shifting because I think it's a good competitor. I mean, um, being able to like be a bird and fly anywhere in the world be sweet. Exactly. Being able to become a whale and dive deep into the ocean. And just, Under your cool own too. power, be able to fly around. You know, teleporting is kind of cool. Like you could teleport up into the sky, drop for a while. But, and then like, teleport, teleport before down. you hit the ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Play chicken with yourself. Uh, but yes, I don't know. That's not really the same. Uh, I, the one thing you could definitely got is the, is the, is the traveling. I feel like there's just so many freaking options with shapeshift. It's true. Um, especially like I don't know how how dense do we get in it? I just like I could probably just shake shapeshift only my arm into you know some tool that I need at time. Oh. Like, there's just so many options. I'm I'm going shapeshifting. Can't even think of them all. Okay. All right. I like the creativity. Maybe you're a more creative person. I'm too practical. I'm just like just get me from point A to point B as fast as possible. <laughs> all, right. all right. I that think that might one. have been the last slide. Uh, we got to do the check though. No more slides left. Uh, tune in to the first week of summer. We're starting this Friday. Gonna be there, and we can say this. We're, we're back in studio, baby. In the studio. We're back in studio, baby. Three days from when we're recording this. I don't know when this release is. <laughs> <laughs>